Um, yeah, so um, this is the first of seven examples on synthetic division of polynomials, which is a very efficient and neat way to divide polynomials. So although I've, um, in my experience, seen that not all algebra students know about synthetic division, all algebra students should know about synthetic division. Like I said, it's a pretty clever way to divide two polynomials, as I'll show you. Now, uh, it does have limitations. Unlike long division of polynomials, synthetic division doesn't always work. Uh, when you, we use synthetic division, we require that we divide by something that's linear in form. So something of the form mx plus b. But I'll show you uh, with a couple of examples to come later that we can get around this um, handicap, uh, which is we could divide by something like a quadratic so long as we can factor the quadratic into a product of two linears and so on. And similarly, then you can divide by a cubic so long as that cubic can be written as a product of three linears and so on. Um, all right, all right. Uh, but yeah, so let's get started with this example. And then um, you'll see uh, through the six other examples, um, kind of like all the variety of um, division problems that you could solve using synthetic division. Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. Let's get started. So to start, what you have to do is take whatever you're dividing by and set it equal to zero and solve for the x that will make um, your divisor zero. So x plus one in this case, we set it equal to zero and we see that x plus one is equal to zero uh, when x is equal to negative one. Okay, cool. And I have already made a little box and this horizontal line, you don't have to use a box, um, just a spot to write a number here and a horizontal line, that's what's required. But if you use a box, fancy, good for you. And um, what we're gonna do with my box here is uh, put this negative one in there, yeah? Okay, cool, so negative one goes here, got it. Now, above the box and to the right of this negative one, and by the way, this number that goes in the box is always by taking whatever you're dividing by and setting it equal to zero and solving. That's how you find um, whatever number goes in this box. Anyway, um, you've seen that here, and once you've done that, then, um, above the number line and to the right of uh, this box, what you'll need to write are um, the coefficients of your polynomial that you're dividing uh, and descending powers of x. Yeah, so uh, if you're not using x, whatever variable. But yes, you start with the highest powered um, uh, term, and in this case, it's x squared, and write its coefficient to start to the right of this box and above the number line. So that would mean we write a one right here because technically in front of the x squared is a one. Yeah, okay, cool. And then we descend down. And if there are any terms missing, so if there was no like x term here and we just skipped from x squared to four, uh, to make up for that missing x term, we would have to put a zero. You'll see that in future examples. But here, this quadratic has none of its terms missing. So after this one to lead, that is the leading coefficient one right there. After that, um, the coefficient of x squared. Next is the coefficient of x. So we write a five, got it. And then next is the coefficient of technically four times x to the zero. But yes, it's, it's basically the last guy and it's just a constant, so we write it. And so there it is. But it is technically a coefficient. It's a coefficient of x to the zeroth power, yeah? Okay, all right, all right. Anyway, um, there it is, that four. And now here's what we do. So this is just a setup. So far, notice I haven't done anything. I'm just telling you uh, where to put what. Namely, whatever makes the, the divisor equal to zero, you put in the box, and then you write down your coefficients in descending powers, um, right? And anything missing, you put a zero for it, right? Okay, cool. Um, otherwise, we get started with the synthetic division process and I am only now about to start, we get started by taking this very first number and writing it below the line. Um, and then we, uh, once we write it below the line, in other words, unaltered, we take this first number and drop it down and then multiply to what's in the box, which in this case is negative one. So one times negative one is negative one. And write that directly below the next number uh, in this list, yeah? And that's the five here. And so now we add down, add down. So five plus a negative one is four, okay? Cool, and now we take this four and we multiply to what's in the box. So once you write your numbers down here, all you do is multiply to what's in the box. So we do that, um, and now four times negative one is negative four, so we write that right there. 
and when we add down we get a zero so when you get a zero here it means that like things have worked out really nicely that's to say that your um, division has a remainder of zero. This here, whatever number you end up with here at the end, is your remainder. So now we have a remainder of zero. And remember, this stood for an x squared. Um, in your situation, it could be like for an x cubed or whatever. And whatever the case may be, whatever this number stands for, this number here is one less degree. It's the coefficient of one less degree. So since this was x squared there, this here is for x to the first, or just x. And this was uh, for x, so this is one less degree. So this is for the constant, and so this is x to the zero. And of course, I'm not gonna write x to the zero. And um, I'm not gonna write x to the zero, that was x to the zero. And whatever sign um, is in front of this guy is telling you whether or not to take this and add it to this or subtract it. This time, the sign in front of this is nothing, which means it's positive, therefore, we see that our answer is x plus 4, remainder nothing, uh, remainder 0. So we're saying the result of this is equal to um, x plus 4. And that's correct. We know we can check that because the original question, this, is the same thing as doing this, which is, it's, it's the same thing as doing um, x squared, right? And then plus um, 5x, and then um, plus 4, right? Divided by... Um, it's the same thing as doing this, right? Uh, plus 4 divided by, and uh, let me use my ruler. It's the same thing as writing this. Now, um, divided by x plus 1. But wait, um, now we know that the numerator factors as, uh, it factors as um, x plus 1 times um, x plus 4. x plus 1 times x plus 4 is the same thing as x squared plus 5x plus 4. So if we divide that by um, x plus 1, which is if we divide uh, x plus 1 times x plus 4 by x plus 1, it'd be the same thing as doing this. But then um, the x plus 1 in the numerator and then the x plus 1 in the denominator, if it makes them look alike, if I put parentheses in the denominator, there it is, uh, they would cancel, right? So we cancel this and this, and the answer would have been x plus 4, and that's exactly what we found here. So at least in this example, we have checked that this method, synthetic division, works. All right, now, because this is example one, I went through it quite slowly, you know, like really uh, going in detail through uh, each step and so on. So in the next examples, I'm going to do it a bit quicker. But yeah, uh, the process works the same way, and you have six more examples to practice with. I hope you enjoyed this, and keep watching. Take care.